The uh, Catlin Arctic Survey was a pioneering international scientific endeavour to measure for the first time at the surface the uh, thickness of the sea ice of the Arctic Ocean in the North Pole region and help scientists with whom we were working, particularly at the University of Cambridge, to project with more accuracy how long before we will have only seasonal cover on the roof of our world. Well, uh, in terms of technology, there were um, th at least three items of special interest. We had a portable radar that we could tow behind the sledges that would take measurements of the snow and separated the ice layer beneath. We had a, an onboard sledge computer that was able to um, receive and process into a, in, in a certain way uh, and prepare for transmission a, a range of, uh, of, of data, photographic, video, biotelemetry, radar data and so on. And then we had a, a data uh, satellite uplink system, a series of modems that enabled us um, uniquely to be able to send um, uh, relatively high volumes of information through um, famously uh, narrow bandwidths uh, offered by the Iridium Satellite Array to communicate our story and our science back to the UK on a, on a sort of semi-real-time basis. Well, a SPRITE stands for the Surface Penetrating uh, Radar for Ice Thickness Establishment. Uh, it's a very long way of saying a sea ice portable radar. And what it was, it was a pioneering piece of technology to measure the thickness separately of the snow and the ice layer that lies beneath it. It's an incredibly difficult substance, or two substances. Uh, one is fresh water, the snow. One is um, sea ice, the, ice uh, the, the frozen water beneath. And um, uh, uh, it, it was able to deliver a, a very detailed, un of unprecedented detail, uh, cross-profile through the snow and ice, revealing the internal um, structure uh, approximately every 10 centimetres for the entire length of our journey, which would have been up to 1,000 kilometres, so millions of cross-profiles of unprecedented uh, detail. Well, the, the, the hub essentially covers two pieces of technology, um, both, again, um, specially um, prepared for this project. The first part was the onboard sledge computer, which was receiving um, data from a variety of sources. So there are a whole number of uh, special ports into which data was being plugged each night when we stopped for camp. We had uh, images, we had video, biotelemetry, radar information, water column information. And the data had to be processed in such a way that it would be uh, able to be sent through the second part of this uh, hub technology, which was the data uh, satellite uplink system. Iridium, which was the satellite array, the only one that's available for communication uh, to an expedition at these latitudes, north of 80 degrees, um, has, a, has a very small bandwidth of the order of 2.6, something like that, kilobits per second, which is fine for voice, um, but for data, it's a problem. For, for, for voluminous data, like video, it's, it's a no-go. So uh, our engineers had, to, had um, assembled a series of modems, and in preparing uh, through this compu special computer uh, uh, the data in such a way that it was made into, into um, millions of little packets of information, which were then sent in parallel down these um, six modems, and then were reassembled at the far end to form the original data package. What we've discovered, I mean I've been operating on the polar sea ice for nearly 20 years now and um, anyone who, who, who lives up in, in the region on the edges of the Arctic Ocean um, uh, will tell you, and we certainly found ourselves, is that around the temperature of minus 40 degrees centigrade, or indeed Fahrenheit, they cross over at the same point there, um, things start breaking. Almost everything is starts to be jeopardised uh, uh, in terms of performance. Uh, cables start to break, batteries stop working, um, fuel um, starts to um, become gelatinous and doesn't flow normally, uh, all, uh, sorry, waxes, all sorts of issues. But on an expedition, I think that it's, well, on an Arctic Ocean sea ice expedition, uh, in the winter and spring when we were travelling, it probably 
offers the severest tests of any that any technology can be put through, even more than space actually, because you haven't just got um, very cold temperatures, but in, uh, very often you've got a thermal cycling going on. It's brought into the tent where it can be up to plus 30 degrees and then put out in minus 40 for the rest of the night or during the course of the day when it's being towed in the sledge. You've got vibration issues as, it, as, it, as the sledges are being dragged. You've got impact issues which are very serious when the sledges are being um, dragged up and, and lowered and sometimes just simply are, are, are sort of um, just freewheeling, if you like, down these uh, chaotic jumbles of ice, two, three, four metres high, uh, terrific shock loads that are, that are passed through the technology and, um, and it's a marine environment and it's a damp environment so you've got salty air and you've got dampness, fog and low cloud which then um, makes its way into the finer um, parts of, of, of some of this equipment, freezes, ex expands and breaks things. Well, it was definitely a success in, in, in the broad brush of what we were trying to achieve, which was to work with scientists, enable them to predict more accurately when we lose the sea ice. That we now know is going to be in about 10 years, um, something of that order, before we have seasonal loss of 80% of the sea ice. But in terms of the technology specifically, it was disappointing, but I'll call it a temporary setback rather than an absolute failure. They were tested in field trials in the polar regions before we set off, and they all worked immaculately. We know the technology works but we switched to battery supply. We were nervous about the uh, new technology uh, and we switched to traditional batteries, but our work continues. We will be on the sea ice in future years and we will dazzle with um, this extraordinary technology uh, designed all in Britain and, uh, and it's a testament to the engineers that they have pulled off this stunning advance on three separate fronts um, with the radar, with the communication with satellites and with the processing capacity and, uh, and we will win. We always get there in the end, that's what explorers do.